Welcome back to Blender Daily. In today's tutorial, I want to demonstrate how we can create a procedural countdown timer with geometry nodes in Blender 3. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start this tutorial with the default cube in Blender. And first of all, I'm just gonna open up a new window and change this to the geometry node editor which is where we're going to do the main work in this tutorial. And then let's also create a new node tree. And as you can see, this also adds in a new geometry node modifier to our cube. We actually don't need the cube itself, so we can just delete this group input node. And instead, I want to show you how we can generate text from within the geometry nodes. So for this, press Shift A and under input, bring in a string node. Here you can see that the string node just has a blue string output and a simple text field where we can type in whatever we want. Now if I were to just connect this string to the geometry output, you can see that nothing happens and this line becomes red, indicating that something is wrong. In order to make this work, we need one more node. So press Shift A again and under text bring in a string to curves node. Once I bring this in between those two other nodes, you can see that the text is now working and we can see it in the 3D viewport. And we can still customize the text to whatever we want. Now currently we only have the outline of the text, so let's continue by adding in actual geometry to this text. So the first step we need to do is to fill in the curves. For this simply use the fill curve node. Unfortunately, it is not yet possible to give the text actual thickness directly from within the geometry nodes. So instead we have to go to the modifiers and add in an additional solidify modifier. But so far you can see that nothing happens even if I increase the thickness. So in order to make this modifier work, we first need to go back into the geometry nodes and realize the instances. And this is very simple, for this we just need to go to instances and bring in a realize instances node. And now you can see that we get the thickness from our solidify modifier. So let's make this a bit thinner and I also want to bring the offset down to zero so that this thickness is centered on our origin. Then let's also center the text itself by changing this from left to center and I want it to stand up, so we're going to use a transform node and rotate everything 90 degrees along the x-axis. Alright, so now this already looks pretty cool, but for our countdown timer we need to have animated numbers and not just static text. So let's delete this string node, since this doesn't really help us. And instead, we want to press Shift A and under text bring in a value to string node. As you can see, this also has a blue string output that we can bring into the string to curves node. And it has a value slider with which you can select any number. And if you want, you can even add decimals, but we're not actually going to use it in this project. The advantage of the value to string node is that we are able to animate this value or use an input for it. So let's now get to the animation of our countdown timer. For this I want to bring in another input node which is going to be a value. And I want to make this countdown timer as versatile as possible, so I'm actually not going to use any keyframes and instead work with drivers. So if you've never done this before, this is very easy. Just click on the value and instead of typing in a number, use the expression hashtag frame. And now this value becomes purple, which means that it contains a driver. And since I typed hashtag frame, you can now see that this value always displays the current frame that we are on. So if I scroll forward to frame 152, you can see that this value also displays 152. And we can now input this into the value to string node and now the text will always output the current frame number. And when we play this, you can see that it is counting really fast. 
Okay, so it is working, but for the countdown, we actually wanted to go into the other direction. So let's bring in a math node, change the input value to the second socket and change it from add to subtract. Then the first value in here is going to be the start value at which the animation should start. So I'm going to bring this to 10, so our countdown starts at 10. But if I now go to the first frame, you can see that it already is at 9. In order to prevent this from happening, we just need to change the start frame to 0. And when we now start at 0, you can see that our countdown starts from 10. And if I now play the animation, you can see that it is working and it is counting down. However, we have another issue, which is that it doesn't stop at 0 and just goes below. But for this, I have a very easy solution. Press Shift A again and on the utilities bring in a clamp node. And here we can set a range for our numbers. So in this case, we want the countdown to go from 10 to 0. And if I play it again, you can see that it goes down from 10 and will stop at 0. So it is technically working, however, it is way too fast. So let's slow this down with another math node. Then we now switch to divide and bring up the value to let's say 5. So now the animation is 5 times slower. And if we want the numbers to change exactly every second, you need to go to the output properties in order to see what the frame rate is. It is 24 in this case. So we can just input the value of 24 into this divide node. And now the numbers will change every 24 frames, which is exactly every second. So let's take a look at it. And now we have a really slow countdown timer. So now it is all working perfectly. However, I don't want to always have to go into the geometry nodes themselves if I want to make any adjustments. I want to be able to customize everything directly from within the geometry node modifier. So in order to achieve this, we need to bring back the group input node that we deleted in the beginning. And as you can see here, we have a spare input that we can use to expose values to the modifier. So let's just do this with our speed value. So I'm going to plug this in here and you can see that we now can control this directly from within the modifier. Currently this is just called value. So let's improve this naming by selecting the group input and press N to open up the side panel. Then on the group, select this value output and just rename it to speed. Then let's also add our other control values. So the next one is going to be the start value that I have set to 10. And this actually always have to be the same as this max value in the clamp node. So we can bring both of them to the same output. Then rename this to the start value. And the last value we need to expose is this minimum value from the clamp node. And I'm going to rename this to end. So now I could actually close the geometry nodes and I am still able to customize everything I need directly from the geometry node modifier. So for example, let's speed it up by bringing down the speed value to five. Or we could make the countdown even longer by starting at 50. So now it is counting down from 50 and we could even make it stop at 30 for example. So those are now the only three values we need to customize our timer. And there is one last thing that I want to show you, which is how to customize the font of the numbers. For this, just go back to the string to curves node. And here you can see that we can click on this folder and load in our own fonts. So I'm just gonna select the font that I have on my computer. For example, this one open it up and when I now apply the timeline you can see that we still have the same countdown but with a different font. And you can really use anything in here and customize the timer to your own needs. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.
I hope you enjoyed it and could follow along with me. I am Nick from Blender Daily, see you in the next one.